Hi folks, a 0.35 kilogram coffee mug is made from a material that has a specific heat of 920 joules per kilogram degree Celsius and it contains 0.25 kilograms of water. The cup and the water both start out at 15 degrees Celsius which is a real cool room temperature. To make a cup of coffee a small electric heater is immersed in the water and brings it to a boil in three minutes. Assuming that the cup and the water always have the same temperature, meaning that the cup and the water are in thermal equilibrium with each other, what is the minimum power rating of the heater in watts? Now, I love problems like this because it requires us to use various areas of physics. If you remember from long ago and far away, power is work per unit time, and it can also be used thought of as energy per unit time. Well, we're going to calculate the energy as the energy input to the water. So how are we going to figure out that energy? The energy is going to be the Q, the heat that is added to the water, and the time, well that time is going to be those three minutes, that three minutes that are used to heat the water. So let's find the energy that is given to the cup and to the water. So when you have different items, each item, each substance has a different mc delta t. So first off for the la di da, let's start with the cup. Um, the cup is going to be the mass of the cup, specific heat of the cup, change in temperature cup, plus mass of the water, specific heat of the water, change in temp of the water. So the mass of my cup is 0.35 kilograms. It, it, we are told it has a specific heat of 920 joules kilograms degrees Celsius. The change in temperature is going to go from um, 15 up to boiling. So boiling temperature, we're, when in doubt, go with what standard? 100 minus 15 degrees Celsius plus the water and it contains 0.25 kilograms of water. 0.25 kilograms. Specific heat of water is 4186 joules kilograms degrees Celsius. And change in temp, let's see, is the same. 100 minus 15. Last I looked, I think that's 85, but my brain is to the point where I better check. Yay, it's still 85. Okay, 85 degrees Celsius. That's going to cancel, and now we can do the math. So when I take 0.35 times 920 times 85, this part is going to be 27,370 uh, joules plus for the water, 0.25 times 4186 times 85, we've got um, 88, 95 joules. Add those together and I end up with a big number of 116323 joules. We should probably round those off somewhere around here. We should get around to rounding things off. Um, and power is going to be change in energy per unit time. Well, this is going to be my Q, that's my energy. Before I do this, let's do that conversion in time. We were told three minutes. Time in MKS units better be in seconds, so we're going to get rid of minutes, go to seconds. 60 seconds, one minute, three times 60, last time I looked was 180 seconds. So we're going to put in that 116323 joules divided by 180 seconds divided by 180 and I ended up with a 646 joules per second. A joules per second is a watt immersion heater. Cool beans. That's that one. Okay, next problem. When a 20 gram piece of iron is placed in a 95 gram calorimeter cup, in lab we always do calorimetry problems, containing 250 grams of glycerin at 10 degrees, the final temperature is observed to be 38. What is the specific heat of glycerin based on this data? Okay, again we're going to have a heat lost equals the heat gained. Okay, heat lost is going to be equal to the heat gained. That's my favorite way of doing 
these kinds of problems. That is using the law of conservation of energy. So who's going to lose heat? Where we're going to have heat lost by the iron, because we're going to have a hot piece of iron, and it is going to be gained by heat gained by two things, the cup, the aluminum cup, and it has glycerin. Glycerin is a rather viscous fluid, um, So and the glycerin. Each thing gets an mc delta t, so let's go ahead and do this. So this is going to be mass of the iron, Fe is the atomic symbol for iron, mass of the iron, specific heat of the iron, change in temp iron, is going to be equal to mass of the aluminum calorimeter cup, specific heat of the aluminum calorimeter cup, change in temp aluminum cup, plus the mass of the glycerin, specific heat of glycerin, and change in temp glycerin. And what's our holy grail? The specific heat of glycerin. This is what we want. Holy moly, it disappeared. There it is. Um, that's what we're after right there. So let's go forth and put our numbers in here. This problem, look at all these lovely digits. We got lots of grams and things. I am going to keep um, working in the CGS system, centimeters and grams, and I'm just going to look up a specific heat of aluminum in uh, in calories. So then I'm going to work in the calorie system. So let's go forth and do this. So I am going to have the mass of my iron. Mass of my iron is 209 grams. So 290 grams, 90 grams. Specific heat of iron is 0 0.11 calories per gram degrees Celsius. Change in temperature iron. Now remember, we want these change in temps to be positive. Starts at 180, ends at 138, so 180 Celsius minus 38 degrees Celsius. Mass of my aluminum. My aluminum has a mass of 95. Specific heat of aluminum is 0.22. Where did I get that? I looked that number up because I want to do this in calories just for giggles. Change in temperature for aluminum. Again, keep it positive. They started, the glycerin and the aluminum started at 10. So 38 degrees Celsius minus 10 degrees Celsius plus the mass of glycerin. How much glycerin? 250 grams of glycerin. Specific heat of glycerin, that's what I'm after. And the change in temp of glycerin, boy, did I get crazy at the end of this equation, didn't I? Change in temp glycerin, there we go. Change in temp of glycerin, because the glycerin and the cup were in thermal equilibrium, they're going to have the same change in temp. You can do this in your head. What's 38 minus 10? Yes, it is. It is 28 degrees Celsius. Okay, that long equation, but not horrible and we are going to go forth and put some numbers to it. So here we go. Um, first off, I'm going to do this subtraction. So 180 minus 38, this is going to be, this is going to end up being 142 degrees Celsius times 290 times 0.11, so the whole left-hand side of my equation, 4530 calories. Degrees Celsius are going to, because um, this is actually up here, degrees Celsius are going to cancel um, calories per gram degree Celsius, so that's going to be calories. Calories will persist. On the left-hand side, I can get one number for all of that when I subtract first, then multiply all of that together. It's going to be 38 minus 10 is 28 times 0.22 times 95. So all of this is 585 calories, calories plus 250 times 28, 250 times 28 plus 7,000. This is going to be grams times degrees Celsius times big C. And I'm just going to make that really big to keep it separate from the degrees 
from degrees Celsius. That can get very confusing. Now I'm solving for the specific heat of glycerin, specific heat of glycerin. So I've got to get that alone. To do that, I am going to subtract the 585 calories from both sides. And when I do that, I am going to end up with, so 4530 minus 585. I end up with 3945 calories equals 7,000 grams degrees Celsius times the specific heat of glycerin. To get specific heat, I'm going to divide both sides by 7,000 grams degrees Celsius grams, oops, 7,000 grams degrees Celsius. That's going to cancel. And I end up with 0 0.564, when I did it, calories on top per gram degree Celsius. And those are the official units in calories for um, a specific heat. So hallelujah, life is very, very good. It actually worked. All right, and in case you did this in joules because you just love joules better, it ends up being 2300 joules per kilogram degree Celsius if you use that system of units because you might have. All right, see you later.